Hey everyone. So I've been going through your journal entries and I've seen a lot, of, a lot of common threads of not being able to find errors, struggling to get, to get programs to work. And so I wanted to pull up one of your assignments from last week. So it says, please enter the type of weather. Uh, if I said um, like snow, I push the button and nothing happens. Very common if there's an error somewhere in your code and it's hard to see what's going on. I can go back to my text editor first and be like, okay, well, can I see anything here? Anything that looks a little bit out of the ordinary? Well, this massive pink bar, I'm not sure it's supposed to be there. And if I look carefully, I said shoe choice equals, and then I start a string with this quotation mark, and then galoshes, semicolon. I never close my string. So I need to put another um, quote there. So I'll go back in here, whoops. Sorry, my computer just froze up on me a little bit. All right, so I'll go back in here, I'll refresh the page, put in snow, and still nothing happens. So at this point, what you should do, no matter what, is right click and hit inspect. <clears throat> and I'll say F12 and it'll open it up. Um, once it opens, you'll see something like this, you know, it'll show, oh, there's my input, there's my please enter the type weather label, my button and everything. If I click on console, it'll show me any errors. If I have JavaScript errors coming up in here, it'll show me those, okay? Right now, I don't have any. I can push this button and there aren't any errors, okay? That makes it really hard to figure out what's going on. Uh, if I look in sources and click on my file, uh, I can look in here. Again, there aren't any JavaScript errors, so what do I do? Last week, you guys had an exercise to, a debugging exercise to help teach you guys how to debug. So I would put a breakpoint right here on the first line inside of my function choose shoes, okay? So I'm gonna push my button and it didn't stop, okay? I can push this button all I want and it's not stopping, which means my code isn't even getting to my choose shoes function, which means something down here isn't working the way that I intend. And if I look carefully at my button, I'm not calling the function choose shoes in my on click, okay? So let's come into here. I'll say choose shoes and I'll call that function. I'll refresh the page. Now I'm actually gonna call that function, okay? I'll go ahead and remove my breakpoint because it should be working well, 100%. I push my button. Now look at this. Now there's a big old error showing up here. I see a little red X over here. And it also shows me what line it's in in here. It says uncut reference error, choose shoes is not defined. Which means when the code first ran, it looked through all my code, it found all my variable names, all my function names and everything like that. And it did not find one called choose shoes. So if I look carefully in here, I'm like, well, choose shoes is right here. Well, I have to remember that JavaScript is extremely case sensitive, okay? So I would just copy this and paste it there, make sure it matches. And I was like, oh, yep, yep. I changed that from a lowercase to a capital, uh, to an uppercase S, okay? So I would save that and refresh this page over here, okay? I would say snow again, hit my button. Okay, look, this didn't throw an error. We came into here and now it's throwing an error on line 14. So we're making progress. It said document.getElementById is not def or is not a function. Hmm. Okay. So I'd want to look at this and be like, all right, well, what's wrong with this? I would want to compare it with the book. If I can't figure out, I would say w3schools uh, document.getElementById. And I'm already seeing something with casing that's a little bit different, but I would just copy this, make sure that I have it right and paste it over here. And you can see it capitalized my, my B. That was our lowercase B. Okay, so found that error, I'll save it. Come back in here and refresh. Okay, no errors yet. Hit my button. Oh, we still have an error. Cannot read property value of null. Okay, we got all sorts of errors coming in here. Notice it's not get element by ID anymore. That is defined, but now it's saying it can't get value of null. When it says of null, it means whatever this brought back, didn't bring back anything. It brought back a null value. So I have to look at, all right, what's document doing? What's get element by ID doing? What's weather? Make sure that all of this will get something. So if I put a breakpoint right here and hit my button. I can hover over document. Good. There's stuff in here. It means it's defined. I can hover over get element by ID. This little, this little guy pops up. It shows that it's a function. It means that it's defined. Good. So there's not a problem with any of this. All right. So now I'm going to highlight from the end of weather, the end of this closing parenthesis, all the way to document and hover over it. 
And look at that, it says null. All right, if we look at our error here, it says cannot read property value of null. Okay, so we were right. This was bringing back a null value. Next thing I'm gonna check, I'm gonna come back to my code and be like, all right, well, these are both defined. Why isn't this? All right, I go to down, I go down to my input and it's like, okay, input type text, weather input, the name's wrong. So I just paste that there, make sure that these match. It can be called anything, but they have to match. So I have that, I'm gonna refresh it. And I take out that breakpoint because we should be good to go. Again, you know, no more errors. Hit my button. All right, so look at this. We made it to line 17 this time. All right, it looks like weather type made it. So we made it through line 14, but then we had an error here. It says weather type is not defined. Hmm, well, that's weird. I declared it right there. Oh, wait, there's a, an error there, a typo. It's lowercase. So I would just copy this, make sure that these match. Okay, and I would refresh the page. Type in snow, hit the button. All right, we're making really good progress. Okay, uh, we don't have any errors until line 26, which is the last line of our function. By the way, if anybody's curious, uh, I made a little comment right here. You didn't have to do this, but I said, make the string lowercase so that all cases of user input will be found. For example, hot, hot, or hot, they'll all be found. Okay, so I just said string dot to lowercase, and I assigned it to that string, so it'll, it'll turn into a lowercase. But let's look at this error. Uh, uncaught type error cannot set property inner HTML of null. Well, that looks kind of familiar. Let me put a breakpoint right here and hit our button. So document is defined. Get element by ID is defined. If I highlight the end of that parenthesis all the way to document, it shows null, which means same as the last one where it couldn't find the input with ID of input. Um, it can't find a, a, an ID down in the body of our HTML with an idea of output div, all right? So if I look down here, I'm like, okay, there's my label, input button, and then my body ends, okay? Surely there's there's no div there that says output div. So I'm gonna copy that and come down into here, div, ID, output div, okay? And have that there. Now I'm gonna refresh, type in snow, hit my button. Uh, if I hover over this, it should show me something. Yep, see how I found my my div output div, okay? So I found it, and then I'm gonna assign shoe choice to inner HTML. My shoe choice is sandals. Okay, well, it looks like our program is kind of working, except we don't wanna wear sandals when there's snow. So there's a little bit of an issue here, okay? I should have had boots get assigned to shoe choice. So this is not a syntactical error. This is a logical error, okay? And what I mean by that is there's no errors coming up in the console. It ran and it assigned something to the, the output div um, that I had, but it's not right, okay? So what I would do for this is I would put a breakpoint on line 17 and run my function, okay? Weather type currently is snow. Two lowercase, we make it snow as well. Shoe choice, the default I made was shoes, okay? So if it doesn't go into hot, rain, or snow, then it'll make the default it'll just stay as shoes, okay? But watch this, weather type equals, or weather type is equal to snow. Is that equal to hot? I can just highlight this and see if it'll say true or false. And it just says hot, that's weird, okay? So I go forward, <gasps> why did it go in here? Weather type was snow, whoa, all of a sudden it's hot. Okay, so there's something funky going on here because I typed in snow and now it's hot and it came into line 20, which it shouldn't have because it was snow. But if I look carefully at this if statement, I only have a single equals here, not a double. A single equals is an assignment operator, which means it will say weather type equals hot, not is weather type equal to hot, okay? So it'll just assign the value hot to weather type. All right, so I'm gonna come back. I just let it go. I'm like, oh, that's definitely a problem. I'm gonna add a double equals into here. And I'm just gonna check my other ones, make sure that I used, oh, look, my same mistake. Oh, and again, okay. So make sure that all of these are double equals so that when it gets to this chunk of code inside your if statement or your else if statement, it's saying if weather type is equal to hot, not weather type equals hot, because then it'll just change whatever the user typed in. All right, I'm gonna refresh, type in snow. Let's test out my two lowercase thing. All right, weather type is snow, all caps. Weather type is now snow, all lowercase. Shoe choice, default is shoes. Is weather type equal to hot? Let's check. 
Now it says false. Okay, last time it said hot just because it assigned the value hot to weather type, but now it's saying false. So it won't go on line 20. Is weather type equal to rain? False. Is weather type equal to snow? True. Comes in here. Shoe choice, which is currently shoes, changes to boots, and then we'll output boots to our, our div. Okay, so I put all those errors in there to show you guys some of the common errors. I'm sorry, I'm sorry that this video took me a little bit longer than I expected, but I got a lot of comments in your journal entries about simple errors like this, not being able to figure out what's going on. And I wanted to show you when I have errors like that, when I have errors like that, what I do to find them. Go to my text editor, and then I open up the console and then the sources. I put in breakpoints if there's like a logical error or something, or I can't figure something out. And um, I just evaluate it each step of the way until I figure out what's going on. In this case, we had at least 10 errors in here and we got them all fixed just one step at a time. Um, but that's that's just how it works. You know, if I had an error, if I wasn't calling my function, that's the first one, that's the first error that I have to find. Uh, and then I can start working through these errors inside my function. So anyways, I hope that this was helpful for you. And uh, if you have any questions, just let me know. One other comment that, I, that I've been getting a lot is about the auto grader. People aren't liking the auto grader very much, which is totally fine. I'm not the biggest fan of it either, uh, which is why I have made the dispute auto grader assignment. Okay, I just opened up iLearn. I've been talking about week six. So at the end of week six, you'll see I have my submit final code, two programs with if statements, and then nested in here, one level is week six dispute auto grader. You'll see the same thing for week seven, for week eight. Anytime you have a code submission, uh, with the auto grader, I have made an assignment for you called dispute auto grader. Now, when you click on that, it says only do this if you feel you received an inaccurate grade from the auto grader on your final code submission. This will count as your new final submission. Now, if you go through the auto grader and it gives you like zero points and it has all these errors and you submit this, I'm not going to give you like a better grade if there's all these errors. I'm only going to give you a better grade if your code is fully functional and the auto grader said it wasn't. Okay. Um, and then, I, and then I say, you may follow these instructions to dispute that grade before the due date of the assignment. So this is due at the same time that the week six final code submission is due, okay? This auto grader assignment will never get graded. It's out of zero, okay? Um, and it says it doesn't count toward your final grade, but we will use this to update your final code submission grade. If you look in here, I say why all this is necessary. Uh, what do I do if the auto grader gave me less than I deserve on an assignment? Um, so follow these steps. And then I say, you have to save your SCORM report, okay? So in here, it'll say, oh yeah, like it had all these errors and it only gave you one point out of four because of this or that. You have to save this and you have to submit it to us so that we can actually see what is going on, okay? And then submit a PDF of your report and the HTML documents. So if I was in here and I was gonna submit something, I would have to submit my PDF of my SCORM report that this document teaches you how to how to save, okay? And then your HTML assignments. So in my case, it would just be this debugging.html, you know, if I had an issue with the autograder with this assignment. So anyways, read this um, and, and be aware of this. If you have an issue with the autograder um, and you feel like you deserved a better grade or you know your code's working, then just submit a, a dispute autograder so you can get that worked out. So, well, you guys, with that said, um, I think that's it for now uh, for my rambling. Uh, we have a live classroom here in about an hour and a half. So I will look forward to seeing you guys there.